Well, hey there, and welcome back to Heimlich's History. As you know, it is exam prep season, and I've been creating a bunch of videos to help you develop the skills that you need to score well. In this video, we're gonna talk about how to write banger responses to the short answer questions. So if you're ready to get them brain cows milked, well then let's get to it. Now what's strange is that the short answer section of your exam probably ought to be one of the easiest things you do, but I have found that students are consistently baffled by these things, and I think it's because they don't understand the process for answering them. So I'm gonna give you a three-step process that will work in dang near every scenario and I hope that it clears it up for you. So before we get started, let me mention two resources that can help you on short answer questions. First is my Discord server, which has some incredible people who can help you with more specifics than I can explore in this video. And that link is in the description. And the second is my APSA cram course, which has in-depth videos on all the writing you'll need to do on the exam, including SAQs, DBQs, and LEQs. Link also in the description. Okay, let's get into short answer questions. Now you're going to encounter two kinds of short answer questions on your exam. The first kind has a stimulus, which can be a passage for you to read or some kind of visual for you to interpret. The second kind has no stimulus, only prompts. And no matter which kind you encounter, the process for answering them is the same, and here it is, T. Topic sentence, evidence, analysis. Now, I didn't make that up. It's a pretty common way to teach SAQs, and if I did know who made it up, I would credit them, but I don't, so I won't. So let me explain each one. The first part of your answer is a topic sentence. Here, you're just going to answer the prompt in a clear declarative sentence. The second sentence is where you introduce your evidence, and make sure that it is specific, like name someone, or some event, or some artifact, or whatever, and tell what it means. The third sentence is your analysis, and this just means you're going to use the third sentence to connect the first and second sentences. Analysis this just means that you're going to demonstrate how your evidence proves your topic sentence. And maybe you'll object and say, isn't it obvious that the evidence supports the claim? No. No, it is not. You have to make that connection. Remember, the person scoring your answers can only score what you have written, not what they think you meant. So you have to be as clear as humanly possible. So I think it'll be a lot clearer with some examples. And I'm going to start with an example from AP World and then go on to AP US. And if you want to skip to the US example, then here is the timestamp. Okay, let's get into the example example for AP World, and this comes from the 2018 exam. This is a stimulus-based SAQ, and so let's take a moment to figure out what we're looking at. And here we have an explanation of the image. Quick note, always read the explanations they give you. It will save you a lot of time and interpretation. So what does it say? The engraving shows a historical encounter in 1765 in which the Mughal Emperor Shah Alam II granted the British East India Company, represented by Robert Clive, the right to collect tax revenue from the Mughal provinces of Bengal, Orissa, and Bihar. Okay, now let's work on part B of this question. Explain one way in which the event depicted in the image reflects economic changes in Asia in the 18th century. All right, now let's spill the tea. Topic sentence. I just want to answer the question without getting too specific, and here's what I would write. The image depicts the means by which Asian economies were weakened in the 18th century. Okay, now let's go to E, evidence, and give a specific example of how Asian economies were weakened. I would write this. For example, joint stock companies like the British East India Company, along with competing mercantilist states in Europe, were able to to use their economic power to weaken Asian economies who could not resist their influence. Okay, that's my evidence, and now let's go one step further with analysis and show how the second sentence proves the first. The Mughal tax grant depicted above shows how Asian states allowed European entities to gain greater access and control to Asian markets, especially with respect to raw material extraction and the export of luxury goods, which ultimately hurt Asian economies. Topic sentence, evidence, analysis, Okay, now let's have a look at an example for AP US history, and in this one we'll use an SAQ without a stimulus from the 2018 exam. Here you see all three parts, and we're just going to answer part A. Briefly describe one specific historical difference between the internal migration patterns within the United States in the period 1910 to 1940 and the internal migration patterns in the period 1941 to 1980. Okay, so they're asking us to compare internal migration patterns from two periods, 1910 to 1940 and then 1941 to 1980. In order to get credit, you have to address both periods. Okay, so let's start with the T, topic sentence. I would write this. One major difference with respect to internal migration between the two periods is the direction of the movement. Okay, now what evidence do I have to support this? Well, I would write this. For example, the Great Migration began in 1916, and from 1941 to 1980, there was a large migration to the Sun Belt states. Okay, here we have two pieces of evidence, but they're not connected to my claim in the first sentence, so let's move to analysis. The Great Migration was the movement of black Southerners out of the South and into the Northeast and Midwest states, primarily 
primarily to find work, while the Sunbelt migration involves people from the north moving into the south and west, in many cases, for jobs in the defense industry. And that's it. T-E-A, and it'll work on nearly every response that you have to give. And I say nearly because there are some prompts that will simply ask you to identify something, and in that case, you really just need one sentence naming whatever it is they're asking for. And you know, the T formula isn't the only way to do it, so if that doesn't work for you, then throw it out and do whatever makes sense. Okay, that's how you respond to a short answer question. If you want me to keep making these videos to help you prepare for your exam, then the way you let me know that is by subscribing. And if you need more in-depth help on all of your writing for the exam, then check out my APSA cram course right over there. Heimler out.